Hi guys, this is gsno.com and I'm here with the Honor Magic V2 for a review. This is a foldable phone with uh, three 50 megapixel cameras on the backside, beautiful vegan leather and a record as far as the thickness and weight is concerned is the lightest and easiest to handle foldable phone on the market with a large screen of course. The price is hefty for the European market, 2000 euros, but you're getting some extras even though some specs feel dated because it has arrived late on the continent, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 being one example. The good news is that you're also getting stylus input for the external screen, not just the uh, internal one. So yeah, there is that uh, attribute available here. Okay, now aside from that, I think it's time to discuss what the handset has to offer. So let's get the review started. First of all, I'm going to talk about the design. Uh, and the main problem here is that we don't have an IP certification for the handset, but there's also a good piece of news. It's the lightest and slimmest foldable on the market, large foldable. I'm talking about 4.7 millimeters in thickness when it's opened up and 9.9 millimeters in thickness when it's closed. It weighs 231 grams and considering the iPhone 14 Pro weighs, uh, Pro Max weighs 240 grams, it's quite light. Very easy to handle, it has a titanium uh, hinge and a magnesium frame, very nice combo of materials. Sadly, not IP certified and the buttons on the side are a bit too slim to be comfy. But it's well built and easy to use with a single hand or with two hands, the grip is definitely there. Quite the immersive screen, both the inner one and the outer one. The colors are black, gold and violet. Now, as far as the screen is concerned, uh, what we're dealing with here, the main panel, it's a LTPO OLED it's actually a 7.92 incher, just so you know. Um, foldable 7.92 shows 1 billion colors, has a 120 hertz refresh rate. And I should probably also mention that it has a 2156 over 2344 pixel resolution. HDR10+, plus, IMAX enhanced, the works. Now the outer screen is a 6.43 incher LTP OLED, shows 1 billion colors, 120 Hz, HDR 10 plus, 2376 over 1060 pixels, nano crystal glass 2.0 protection. It's a very bright panel, actually both of them are. They have wide view angles, as you can see for yourself, and uh, very brilliant and crisp colors, so no objection there, you're definitely not lacking anything compared to the rivals. The crease is there, but it's not very visible. I wouldn't say it's as well hidden as the OnePlus Open one, but still it's pretty well hidden. Now, if you're going to watch uh, videos in the other way, I'm talking about uh, maybe uh, this way here. So if you're doing this, you will notice the cutout here, the punch hole and some black bars, but those are inherent to the format. Now, when it comes to the brightness, we did some measurements, and this is what we achieved. First of all, a 911 lux units. Let's turn down the brightness a little bit. So, 911 lux units were achieved for the main screen, and 933 for the external one. Now, with the outer value, we placed second only after the OnePlus Open, and we beat the Galaxy Z Fold 5. And with the other value, we actually surpassed quite a few phones like the Huawei Mate X3 and the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra but were below the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and below the OnePlus Open which are the main rivals for this format of phone. The settings include the brightness and also those very cool I would say gimmicks but they're actually quite useful those very cool features when it comes to the um, sleep and eye care, eye comfort, circadian, night display dynamic dimming, PWM dimming and so forth. You can also mess about with the colors. There's an ebook mode, color mode and temperature and so forth. So the screens are excellent. Now, the other specs, let's talk about the CPU. It's a bit dated, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. There's already talk of Gen 4. Uh, it was shown at EFI in September. So yeah, not exactly the newest phone on the market. We also have 16 gigs of RAM and uh, 512 gigabytes of storage, but no micro SD. We did a throttle test, so let's see how that turned out. So once again, we have quite a few photos here and this is the throttle test. As you can see, it loses about 21% of uh, performance. Uh, it's actually better than the Galaxy Z Fold 5. So yeah, there's that. Now let's see how it behaves in benchmarks. First up, on 2 to 10. 11th spot, just above the Galaxy Z Flip 5. It also scores below the OnePlus Open and below the Z Fold 5. Um, however, it beats them in the um, 
other test. So no, excuse me, uh, let's start again. So it's above the one plus open, but below the Z Fold 5, as you can see here, and also below the Realme GT3, but below the Galaxy S24 Ultra. That's Antutu 10. When it comes to Geekbench 6 in the single core test, it's able to beat OnePlus Open, but in the multi-core one, it scores below it, as well as below the Galaxy Z Fold 5. When it comes to GFX Bench, which is a more, I would say, GPU-oriented test, in some, if not all, of the sub-tests, it's able to defeat its rivals, OnePlus Open especially. In 3D Mark Wildlife uh, Extreme Unlimited, it beats even check it out, even the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which is quite impressive, I didn't expect to see that, the Z Galaxy Z Fold 5 is still on top of it. It's reasonably close to its rival, seeing how the CPU is dated, that's pretty impressive. Now the battery is shockingly big for such a slim format, 5000mAh, 66 watts charging, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 had a 4401, OnePlus Open 4801, so Pretty impressive. It is an, even has a charger in the box and 5 watts reverse wire charging. There's a new technology, silicon carbon battery, which makes the battery more dense. And it's still very slim and still a 5000mAh unit. Now, when it comes to the battery test, we are here with it. We achieved, when it comes to the video playback, 19 hours and 20 minutes, which is quite solid. It's above the Huawei Mate X3 and the Galaxy Z Fold 4, but below the Z Fold 5 and it's 21 hours and below the OnePlus Open. In PC Mark, I was a bit let down by the 9 hours and 55 minutes. It's actually above Huawei Mate XS2, but below OnePlus Open and the Z Fold 5. When it comes to charging, we can reach 100% from zero in 44 minutes, which is faster than the rivals, which go, which go above one hour, the OnePlus Open and the Galaxy Z Fold 5. In 50 minutes, we're at 46%, which is very fast. <clears throat> there are also power saving features, just so you know. And I actually forgot to mention before that the temperatures are quite fine, 37 degrees Celsius in benchmarks and 32.3 degrees Celsius in game. So no overheating here. And once again, quite fine battery when it comes to charge, but not very impressive when it comes to continuous usage. Now the speakers, you can see we have one here at the bottom and the other one is at the top. Now we have a stereo speaker system. We will not cover the speakers even if you hold the phone like this and even covered, they still sound great as you're about to hear. Plenty of bass, quite the loud sound, and especially in movies and games, uh, they will cover the conversation in a living room. That's how powerful it is. No distortion, pretty solid treble. I'm actually pretty impressed by it. It's gonna become a common feature for foldables to have solid um, speakers, I noticed. Volume power is measured with a decibel meter. We achieved 86.5 decibels at the top and 84.7 decibels at the bottom with a typical acoustic sample test. With the bottom value, we surpassed both the Galaxy Z Fold 5 and the Huawei Mate X3, but were below the OnePlus Open. I'm underwhelmed by the gaming and it's 89.8 decibels, and still we beat the uh, Galaxy Z Fold 5 and OnePlus Open, but we score below the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Now we can talk about the cameras, and um, the cutout here hosts a 16 megapixel camera, and the other cutout, the external one, hosts another 16 megapixel camera for the selfies. 4K video, luckily, and f2.2 aperture. At the back side, things get a bit more complicated. We got a dual LED, dual tone flash, matrix image, and three, uh, actually not three, but uh, uh, there are two 50 megapixel cameras and a 20 megapixel shooter. So the main 50 megapixel camera, uh, I think I may have spoke uh, erroneously in the intro of the review and called it a three 50 megapixel camera phone. It's actually 50 megapixel main camera, f1.9 aperture, and a special time of flight and laser focus mechanism and optical stabilization. Then we have the 20 megapixel telephoto camera with 2.5x optical zoom and phase detection autofocus, and then the other 50 megapixel camera ultra wide with autofocus. And uh, well, this cam is able to capture 4K video, 60 frames per second, and even 10 bit video and supports HDR10. Plus, this is the camera option settings uh, area. Uh, we have the aperture here, we have the night mode, the portrait mode, we have the photo taking regular one with quite a few options, including a uh, cover screen preview, which you can see here on the external screen. We have AI features. This is the video department. It even has a special super night for video. There's the movie mode, 
with log and loot if you want to do your colorization afterwards pro mode and a more section with others okay when everything's said and done it's time for a pretty nifty gallery i say nifty because it's atypical it's not your average walk in the park in eastern europe no we went to leipzig and uh, we have here some information so yeah uh, they went to my colleague went to germany for this one that's why he has quite a few lovely samples okay so we start off with the wintery sites of romania with uh, cold colors and at the same time some deformation of the scenery on the sides when you're looking at the ultra wide frames even though the details are there the zoom was quite impressive if you ask me this is the deformation i was talking about in the ultra wides and once again i'm pretty impressed by the zoom it went above expectations for a 2.5x look at the clarity of the antenna here this is definitely 10x zoom or more and a lot of texture when it comes to macros and close-ups so it's very good far and very good close-up and then the plane ride starts to leipzig in germany at the porsche headquarters and we have very vivid and live colors I actually notice that aspect aside from photographing cars and such things it feels like back in the days where we didn't have a color profile when we set up the phone. Remember that? The iPhone has a color profile now. Xiaomi's have a Leica color profile. Huawei's have a color profile. This one doesn't. This one went with warm colors, which nowadays we don't see that much. These are indoor shots. We also have outdoor shots where the colors are pretty impressive and uh, satisfying. The selfies are quite fine. As far as foldable goes, this is top 3 material. Excellent texture, details expressive face eyes you can see the skin pores without trying too hard so it's one of the better cameras and once again it's pretty good for tourism lots of details decent zoom some lovely colors even though some images are a bit too contrasty for my taste and the ultra white has some deformation on the sides in general it's one of the better foldable phone cameras very hard to say if it's inferior or superior to the oneplus open and the Galaxy Z Fold 5 depends very much on the color calibration you desire. That's the thing. But when it comes to the zoom, when it comes to the close-ups, when it comes to touristic photographs, I'm impressed. Not as much by the ultra wide, but the main camera definitely delivers. Somewhere between the Honor Magic 4 Pro and the 5 Pro. Those are daytime shots. We also have nighttime shots. And we even try the moon shot. We struggled a bit, but it's definitely not one of the better ones. Here I'm actually not that impressed. Typical uh, yellow image stuff on account of the yellow light sources, which are exacerbated by the ultra wide capture. You can see the halos are too big for my liking. Things that are either too noisy or too bright. There's a baked in night mode and the regular night mode, but I'm actually not that impressed. The only times when I was actually impressed is that uh, are the moments when we encountered some uh, white lighting to get things properly clear and the zoom wasn't that impressive compared to the daytime the colors are fine the greens and the oranges i notice are fine the street light sources become too big in the ultra wide but in general it's not exactly mind-blowing i would say it's inferior to the galaxy z Fold 5 these have been the nighttime photos and some extra colors here when i told you they're vivid the colors truly are vivid <clears throat> okay so now let's also talk about the videos we have them here so let's take them one by one for example this one here shows an excellent ability to focus and alternate between focuses the foreground and the background very fast i'm also pretty impressed by the stabilization in quite a few scenarios walking around in full hd or 4k no matter the frame rate things deliver pretty good level of detail some reflections here and there which are inherent to filming with the sun the colors, I would say, are even more vivid than it happened for the photos, especially the reds. Definitely more vivid than the Samsung and the OnePlus Open, so if you're gunning for that, you'll be impressed. The selfie video is good enough for vlogging, at least for TikTok, it's actually too good. You don't need that much clarity for TikTok. And once again, stabilization is top-notch. You can walk, you can even do a slight sprint you will not notice any annoying flicker or any problem with the camera so focus fine stabilization fine colors fine but a bit on the warm side and we even have a meeting here with a person from uh, oppo tony ran if i remember correctly 
excuse me, not OPPO, I meant Honor, uh, discussing the strategy that the company has for the near future and the beautiful Porsche version of the handset here. Okay, these have been daytime videos. We also have uh, low light videos, which are honestly mid range material. Reflections, noise, huge light sources, halos. I'm not that impressed by this one. Of course, this is one of the worst ones. Definitely underwhelming when it comes to the night videos. Okay, so that's about it camera wise. Let's talk about the connectivity. Now, as far as connectivity is concerned, this is obviously a 5G phone with uh, Wi-Fi connectivity as well, Wi-Fi 6C and Wi-Fi 7. There's Bluetooth 5.3, there's GPS dual band here. Uh, we also have uh, GLONASS, BDS, Galileo, QZSS, NFC, and the even GPS dual band, as I said before, plus an infrared emitter at the top side and a USB-C 3.1 port at the bottom with display port 1.2. The calls are pretty loud and clear. You have the earpiece here, very discreet. You can barely tell it's here. And uh, we also did a speed test or two or three. And the results are as follows. In Wi-Fi 709 over 738 download and upload respectively. And on 5G, we're going to make them and be back with the details afterwards. Now, as far as the software is concerned, the transition is very smooth from the inner screen to the outer screen. Have the news feed here. No surprises, we're using gestures for multitasking. That's just one example. So let's try some multitasking here. You can have the gallery on the one side. You can even expand it to full screen. And then you drag like this. And for example, if you want the files, you can split the screen in just two. Uh, Galaxy Z Fold 5 and its rivals can split the screen in three. But you can add an extra layer of multitasking by having a hovering app here you can keep writing on it or open a keyboard or things like that. So take a note, open the email and so forth. There's even a sort of flex mode, not exactly the flex mode. What bothers me is the actual lack of a, uh, well, taskbar area here at the bottom side. It's available only here in the main menu when you enter an app. It's not available anymore. It's gone, unlike its rivals. As I said before, sort of flex mode means this. You fold the screen. You're getting the gallery and options at the bottom and the viewfinder at the top side. When you're in a browser, you're getting the keyboard at the bottom, the browser at the top side. When you're in the input area, you should be getting the input part at the top and the keyboard at the bottom, provided you choose type note. So this is the keyboard. It's a Sony Vio-like experience. There are, those are just some examples, not exactly flex mode from OnePlus Open and Galaxy Z Fold 5, but you get the idea. Aside from that, it's typical uh, Honor Magic experience with a lot of options here, including link to Windows for productivity and a special Honor Connect, which is here, lets you control to Honor tablet, Honor laptop, Honor watch, and so forth, and continue working and drag and drop and so forth. Uh, there's a fingerprint scanner on the side here, in the power button, which is quite snappy and fast. There are the battery settings here with a special performance mode, safety and emergency, security, and also parallel space if you want to have a special work dedicated environment, the privacy area, a special assistant and foldable phone features like keeping the exterior screen on, app scaling and app extender. Plus once again, parallel space. The most useful app is this one here, system manager for your productivity needs, for optimization, Blocking calls, battery drop zone and virus scan, cleanup. There's a game center for gamers. There's a bunch of tools here like device clone, smart remote to use the infrared emitter. There's the Google section, worry not, as we have the Google services and Play Store intact. Okay, and Honor Docs, believe it or not, is interesting because it's basically a replacement for your Excel doc, PDF, whatever, slides. So a pretty nice package overall. You can have an app drawer or have all the apps on the screens like I'm doing right now. And if you want some customization, you also have your transition cards and home screen here. Cards is, uh, the cards being uh, good looking widgets, but they are also the basic ones. So it's your choice, basically. The notifications come from the swipe from the left, quick settings swipe from the right. And I think we're about done and unless I missed something. Okay, so and I think now it's time for the verdict, but I forgot to mention something. The external screen also supports stylus, not just the internal one, which is something that the Galaxy Z Fold series doesn't have. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons. It's verdict time. This is the slimmest and lightest large screen foldable phone. It has stylus input for the external screen. 
It has faster charging than its rivals, vivid colors for the pictures, which is something that most phones nowadays don't do anymore, bright and crisp screens, both of them, good macro shots, four years of Android updates, by the way, new battery technology, it's comfy and well built, and uh, surprising zoom, to be honest, I didn't expect the zoom to be so good. Now, on the cons, the battery life isn't exactly what I expected. Uh, the video and pictures at night, I wanted a bit more from it. Uh, it was launched late in the European Union and it's quite pricey at 2000 euros. And uh, some features are lacking compared to its rivals. I'm talking about the flex modes, the splitting the screen in three. And the uh, bundle stylus would be nice, to be honest, for this price tag. Um, what else is there? Um, that's pretty much it, I think. And, uh, well, it's still a record breaker for the design. I think that's what people are going to buy it for. For the fact that you feel like you're using a regular phone, not a foldable phone, and then you open it up and you gain a lot of screen estate. If a stylus was bundled and we also had a split screen in three and a dock area, things would have been much nicer. But camera-wise, it can fight the OnePlus Open and Galaxy Z Fold 5, at least during the day. So the format is the selling point here. I expect the price to drop, should happen fast, because it's been launched ever since last fall in China and only now in Europe. It remains to be seen. It has potential and I'm waiting for the successor already. That's it from us. Goodbye.